Hey guys, and welcome back to Top Trash Sports. It's Monday, we're talking baseball, of course. Not a lot has happened since the last we spoke, but two big things did that we're going to touch on this week. I'm still here. You're welcome. Or I'm sorry. Uh, so with the news of the Josh Donaldson signing, we're starting to kind of see a bit of the fallout from it. So obviously the Braves lose that bat, and they actually make a similar signing this year that they did last year when signing Donaldson to the one-year $20 million deal that they brought him in on. A kind of a prove-it contract, Donaldson did just that and landed a big payday. So Marcelo Zuna thought maybe he could do the same thing. He signed a one-year $18 million deal, just $200,000 more than the qualifying offer that was extended to him months ago by the Cardinals. So that means that... The Cardinals get a qualifying offer, or they get a draft pick as compensation for the qualifying offer um, for the upcoming draft. The other than big signing is with Ozuna off the market, it seemed likely that Castellanos was to follow. A couple teams that were looking at him were the Cardinals, if they weren't going to sign Ozuna. Uh, the Rangers could use some outfield uh, depth. And the Reds were surprisingly a big name, and they have a ton of outfield depth. Well, it was the Reds that ended up signing him to a pretty darn good contract with how good of a hitter he is. Four years, $64 million. It has a couple of opt-outs in it that uh, I wasn't quite sure about, so something that I would want to look into more. But uh, from what I can tell, it looks like he could potentially opt out after the first year, and then uh, he would have a second opt-out later on in the contract. Um, but a very nice payday for Castellanos, in my opinion, uh, and a good contract for the Reds. The only thing is there, it's a bit questionable where he fits into the outfield mix. They have a lot of outfielders. Um, clearly, he fits in as a starter, as an everyday bat. Um, the question kind of becomes, where does everybody else fit, I suppose? Um, with uh, the signing of Akiyama earlier in the offseason, um, they already started loading up when they signed Mike Moustakis to the infield. Uh, so Senzel is starting to kind of become the odd man out. You've got Winker out there. He's kind of solidified his spot. Again, Akiyama, they have uh, Aquino and Senzel. And then uh, I believe they have Shebler still. They, they've got a lot of guys out there that they need to figure out where to put them or how to offload them. So I'm not one to typically dive in to rumors. But apparently, the Reds are going to try and shop Senzel uh, and see what they can get for him. A big name that's been tossed around is Lindor. With this signing of Castellanos, they could be a lot more willing to part with Senzel. Um, I think Senzel looks like he's going to be a really good uh, player. I think the Reds shouldn't have signed Castellanos. I think they should have uh, stayed complacent with where they're at. They definitely are the most improved team in the NL Central. They, be they definitely look like the team that is going to make the biggest push at challenging the NL Central top uh, for, for the, to reign supreme. Uh, the Cardinals didn't really add a ton, the Cubs didn't add a ton, if anything, um, and the Brewers didn't add any starting pitching, so that's their big issue. Um, and the Pirates are, well, the Pirates. Which is the other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, the outfield trade market in, well, the whole trade market is really going to take shape now that the last big name free agents in Ozuna and Castellanos have fallen off the market. Um, so this leads to the potential for Arenado, which I'm not going to, I think that's just, you're blowing a lot of smoke there. Uh, Lindor, same deal. But the outfield is a little interesting. Starling Marte and Mookie Betts are two guys who have been tossed around a lot. Mookie being the most interesting because he's a top five player in the league. Um, he just signed a one-year deal to avoid arbitration. His last year of arbitration eligibility uh, was one year, $27 million. So whatever team were to get him, they would only get one year of Mookie. So then you'd have to take into account what are they going to give up to get one year of Mookie. Um, also to take on that much money, a lot of moving pieces there. Uh, but the Padres are the big team talking about both of those outfielders, and the Mets are apparently in on the Marte market. We shall see over the next couple of weeks what takes shape before spring training gets underway. Uh, but the nice thing is, for the first time in I think two, maybe three years, no big name free agents are going to be uh, left sitting 
when spring training comes around. Obviously, you got a lot of middle tier, middle of the road players who may not get contracts or, you know, until spring training or until injuries pop up. Uh, but for the most part, you know, your Bryce Harpers and your uh, Donaldsons and all those guys are signed. They've, they've been handed their contracts. They've been handed their guarantees. So we will see them play and hopefully play to the best of their ability this year and, and not any slow starts. There you have it. That does it for today. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about NBA, which... Uh, if you haven't heard, Kobe Bryant sadly passed away, so tomorrow I'll be talking all things Kobe, uh, be completely dedicated to the man and the legend that he absolutely was, uh, so tune in tomorrow to see that. Other than that, thanks for watching.